Welcome to the seventh lecture session of this special program of online courses prepared by AKT University, I University. Now, till now we were discussing theoretical aspects of a subject. Some things, some attention should be given to grammar also because students grammar is something which prepares the base of any language. It is not about English language, about any language if you are well versed in language things become very easy for you to have a command on that language. Uh, as far as English language is concerned about two decades ago when we were students a lot of emphasis was given on grammar portion during school English teaching. But with the passing away of time things have changed and today I find that grammar in most of the schools is a neglected section. The amount of labor and the amount of rehearsals, revisions which are required for this uh, portion is not actually done. Anyway, it is never too late for anything. I feel personally that uh, if we are ready, if we are desirous to learn a thing, we can. So, as I have already stated, I am Dr. Nivedita Lal from Applied Sciences and Humanities Department, ITM GIDA. And today the topic which I intend to take is analysis of sentences we will be in particularly talking in this lesson about simple sentence. So, now the agenda prepared for this topic is first we will go for the definition, then we will see subject and predicate because understanding this sentence structure it should be very clear to you what is a subject though it is very simple. But Sometimes when the sentences become long or indirect speech or passive voice enters, the students get confused. So, there should be a very clear concept about what is a subject, what is a predicate and then we will move forward to subject word and predicate word. So, now let us first of all define sentence in a very very plain way because I have seen generally sentence the definition of sentences they sometimes become so complicated that students get confused. So, in very plain simple way what is a sentence? Sentence is a group of words that makes complete sense, so clear, so simple. Sentence is a group of words that makes complete sense. Now, here the first stage in analysis of a sentence is to divide into two parts, first will be the subject and other will be the predicate. The subject denotes the person or thing about which something is said as it is clear in the sentence the subject de decides the person or thing about which something is said and the predicate is the context said about the person or thing denoted by the subject. Let us take some very simple examples. Dogs bark. Who is the doer of the action here? Dogs and what is the action done? Barking. So, the dogs bark if we divide into sections the subject will be dogs and the action of barking will be predicate. Second, my father gave me a watch. Here again, my father is the doer of the action and the act of giving the watch will be under the category of predicate. The flames spread in every direction, God forbid. The flames spread in every direction flames we are talking about. So, it will be subject 
and what happens is the happening is spreading in every direction it will be under the category of predicate. Fourth and the last is the point of the point to act this will be under the category of subject and has arrived will be under the category of predicate. Now, here let us see the subject may consist of one word or several words as it is very clear in first sentence dogs bark here the subject are dogs only one species of animals. So, this one word is dogs, but in sentence uh, 4 the subject consists of 4 words just pay attention to sentence number 4 the point to act has arrived here the subject has 4 words the point to act 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it is a group of words denoting a subject. Now, the main wor word the main subject is dog in sentence 1 and the main uh, sub uh, words are the point to act in uh, sentence 4. Same will happen in predicate section also the predicate may also consist of one or more words in sentence 1 the predicate consists of only one word that is bark, but in sentence 3 the predicate consists of again 4 words spread in every direction. Now, this group of words is acting as a predicate. So, when the subject of a sentence consists of several words the most important word is called the subject word or simple subject. The subject word is always a noun or a group of words that does the work of a noun. Let us take examples sentence 1 the rich are always happy here which is the most important word the rich rich sentence 2 my views are quite different here the most important word in the section of subject are my views so definitely in both the sentences in sentence 1 rich will be called subject word or simple subject and in sentence 2 views will be under the category of subject word or simple subject. In the complete subject the subject word is qualified by an adjective or its equivalent called enlargement of attribute. Let us take few examples here again sentence 3 is new brooms sweep clean new brooms sweep clean if we divide it under subcategories what is the subject word here broom it is about broom that we are talking about the predicate part will be sweep clean because we are talking about the action done and attribute section will have new it is some special word new. So, in sentence 2 the words can be divided in the following categories barking dogs seldom bite just see the example here in fourth sentence. So, the subject word will be dogs barking will be the attribute and predicate will be seldom bite again in sentence 5 the sentence is a stitch in time saves 9 if we classify it under the mentioned categories stitch will come under the subject word 
a will be an attribute and predicate will be saves 9. When the predicate consists of one word, it is always a verb, we should remember that. If in any sentence predicate has got only one word, definitely it will be a verb. But when the predicate consists of several words, uh, the essential word is always a verb called predicate verb. This verb in the predicate section may be qualified by an adverb or its equivalent called adverbial qualification or extension. Let us understand it with some very simple examples. Sentence 1 is the flames spread everywhere. Here definitely the flames will be under the section of subject. Verb is spread and adverbial qualification which we just now talked about will be everywhere. Sentence 2, he went home. Here apparently the subject is he, went will be the verb which forms the main part of the predicate and home will be adverbial qualification which again will be a part of the predicate. Third example, the swallows appear in advancing spring. The swallows subject appear is the main predicate verb and in advanced spring, advancing spring rather, it will be the adverbial qualification. When the verb in the predicate section is an interactive verb, it alone can form the predicate. Examples, black clouds are gathering. Now, just pay attention here, black clouds are gathering. So, here gathering will be under the category of interactive verb. The boys have been reading. Again here, reading will take the category of interactive verb. Sometimes it so happens that the verb in predicate is in the transitive form and, the, and it requires an object to complete its sense. Again switch over to some examples. The crow tried to sing. If we divide it in sections, verb is tried and object is to sing. Second example, birds build nests. Here the verb will be build and object will be nests. This object word may also have the attributes just like the subject word. Example, he shot a tiger. In this sentence, shooting the verb shot is the predicate, object will be the tiger and attribute will come under the um, A section. So, this will be the division of the predicate part, shot verb, tiger object and a attribute. The verb in predicate section is, is a transitive verb that takes two objects a direct object and an indirect object. Examples, I promised him a present. Here just pay attention, promised is the verb, the main predicate part, indirect object will be him and direct object will be a present because the work is directly being done through present. So, that will be direct object and the present is being given to him. So, it will be indirect object. Another example, he teaches us geometry. Now, teaches us geometry, definitely the main verb here is teaches which forms the main predicate part. Direct object is geometry and indirect object will be us. Some transitive verbs require a complement also sometimes, 
otherwise it will be incomplete in addition to the subject. Before we end up, let us understand this portion also because many times I have seen that students get confused about this complementary part that uh, what is the role of complement here in these sentences. Suppose if I say the boys made Rama the captain. So, if we state the sentence in a way the boys made Rama, is it giving you any sense? No. The boys made Rama the captain. So, you have to add the captain for a complete meaning. So, this portion the captain will be a complement, it will be called a complement, it, it means pura in Hindi. So, complement will be the captain for making a complete sentence. Next, his parents named him Hari. Again here, his parents named him Hari. Hari will be the complement part, his parents named him. It does not sound correct. If you add Hari, the sentence will have a finishing touch. That is why his parents named him Hari. Students, whenever we go for any kind of uh, grammar, we have to be careful that it should always be correct. We do not need to use complicated complex sentences in our daily usage if we do not have a control. We can opt especially for professional people, you need not go for very uh, arrogant vocabulary. You can take up simple words, you can select for simple sentence structure and you can make your uh, presentation, your written presentation or your oral presentation perfect. So, pay attention. Thank you. Thank you.